This season of The Ones Who Succeed is brought to you by Skillshare. If you are contemplating it and scheming it and thinking about it and dreaming about it, then I think you need to go and do it. Hi, my name is Campbell Barron, and I'm a 15-year-old entrepreneur and content creator. And you are watching my video podcast, where each week I meet with inspiring entrepreneurs and talk to them about their journey to success. Hear their stories, experiences, and firsthand what it took to succeed in their field. Why am I doing this? Because I want to learn from the ones who succeed. And you can too. Welcome back to another episode of The Ones Who Succeed. I'm Campbell Barron, and today I'm joined via Skype with Ryan Holmes. Ryan is a serial entrepreneur and the founder and CEO of Hootsuite. Hootsuite is a social media management platform with over 16 million users worldwide. Hootsuite is based out of Vancouver, BC, and was recently valued at over $1 billion. Ryan, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Yeah, you bet. So let's just start this off at the very beginning. Um, I read that you grew up on a farm in Vernon, BC with no electricity, essentially off the grid. What, what was that like? Yeah, that, that, you know, it's true. I, I grew up in a farm in the Okanagan. We were off the grid, no electricity. We had goats and chickens and honeybees and a well and kerosene lamps. It was really uh, a, a great place to grow up, a big adventure. My parents were teachers and they left teaching to uh, chase this adventure and, and to build a, a house and a farm. And, and so that's what, you know, I, I grew up with. Um, you know, I think that it was, it was so interesting to kind of be really off of the grid and not have a lot of the, you know, things like TV and other things around that, that most people just take, took for granted today. Yeah. And I read that in grade five, you won a programming contest and the prize was an Apple computer. But since you were off the grid, you ran that computer off a car battery because you didn't have electricity. Anyway, my question is, how did you get into programming at such a young age and especially living off the grid? It wouldn't seem like the two go hand in hand. In grade five, I discovered the school library uh, had these computers and I was kind of like a moth to a flame. I just was so enamored with them i i you know they had some some games basic games like education games and i played them i this is really cool like i love this thing and uh there was real scarcity to them there was only five in the library four i think and and it was first come first serve so every you know recess lunch after school i'd run in you know try to (laughs) elbow my way into one and the librarian realized I was really passionate about these things. And, uh, you know, he said, hey, Ryan, you know, there's this thing called programming. And with programming, you can, you know, you can do things like build your own games. And, that, you know, my eyes just lit up. I'm like, oh, you can you can make your own. What? That's that's really cool. And so he sh- showed me a little bit of uh, basic programming. And then I just went from there. Right. I started building all sorts of little programs and uh, it was an amazing creative outlet. And um, shortly thereafter, the programming contest came along and I, I won the computer and uh, my dad rewired the computer to run off yeah. of 12 volts. And I popped the hood on my mom's car and plug in a couple of alligator clips and uh, go play on the computer and programmed a lot more uh, at home after that, which was it was great. So when you were growing up, you obviously you discovered this love for programming, but did you enjoy school? Yeah, I love school. It was, you know, I I, I think I, w- I, I was able to scratch my entrepreneurial itch um, during high school, which which gave me, I, I think if I wasn't doing, you know, I had a paintball field, I started in grade 10. Um, it was a really cool venture uh, that I could 
do off the side, do after school and on weekends. And if I didn't have that outlet, I probably would have been um, a little restless in school. But I, I think it gave me that outlet and I was able to kind of do do more. And I, I really appreciate that opportunity. It was a very cool one. But I, I love school. It was, it was great. I, I think I wanted to go and, you know, charge out and go and make a dent in the universe um, and, and sometimes I felt like it was slowing me down from doing that. I was restless to go and do that. But on the other hand, you know, it's something that, that y- you, you need as, as table stakes for, for life. So Ryan eventually went to business school at the University of Victoria. That being said, he ultimately dropped out. I dropped out in, um, let's see, I think it was 98 or 99, uh, and, and I had this passion for computers. The internet was blowing up uh, in a good way. There was just so much dot-com stuff going on. And hilariously, I went and started a restaurant. Okay. So, you know, why, why the hell is this guy that's interested and passionate about computers? There's this huge internet revolution that's yeah. starting up, and I go and start a restaurant. But anyways, I started a pizza by the slice restaurant. Uh, I did it for uh, two years, uh, th- kind of through the end of 98, 99, and uh, it, was, it was great. I learned so much, um, it, did, did it back in my hometown. Um, I was able to do both my paintball business in the restaurant, and so it kept me super busy, learned a ton, had a great time. But in 99, kind of fall of 99, I was looking again at all this internet that was really going crazy. And I was like, why am I over here doing this when there's probably one of the biggest disruptive uh, waves and trends that humanity's ever seen happening over here? I should probably go and get involved in that. And so I sold the restaurant and that's what I did. Coming up, I continue my conversation, but first a quick message from our sponsor. This season of The Ones Who Succeed is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 20,000 classes in business, marketing, technology, design, and more. You can take classes in social media marketing, video editing, entrepreneurship, you name it, they've got it. So whether you're trying to deepen your professional skill set, start a side hustle, or just explore a new passion, Skillshare is there to keep you learning and thriving. So join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today because Skillshare is offering the first 250 people who click the link in the description two months of unlimited access to over 20,000 classes all for free. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash succeed. Again, that's Skillshare.com slash succeed to start your first two months now. That link is also right here on the top right corner of this video and a special thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this season. So the year is 2000, and after Ryan moved on from the restaurant, he eventually founded an agency called Invoke. And at Invoke, we focused on doing services work for customers. So people would bring us problems, you know, following the whole evolution of the internet. You know, we had people that were looking for websites and people that were looking uh, at a later stage for email marketing, for search marketing. And uh, we built out a kind of a string of products along the way to help those customers. So we had services and then products. And uh, with, with the kind of advent of social, we started having customers asking us how they could get better awareness on social media, uh, asking us for services uh, in, in social media for social media marketing. And what we realized pretty early on was that there was a lot of uh, complexity to managing multiple brands on social media with multiple team members. And uh, that was the aha moment and kind of what led us to, to build out Hootsuite was solving that problem. And Ryan did solve that problem because today Hootsuite is valued at over $1 billion. But he didn't stop there. In 2013, Ryan started the League of Innovators, which is a nonprofit based out of Vancouver that helps entrepreneurs with their businesses, essentially an accelerator program. I believe that entrepreneurs are uh, a huge accelerant to prosperity. I mean, if you think about uh, anything that you look at and touch and feel and see, it was brought to market by an entrepreneur. You know, I'm talking on my iPhone right now, an entrepreneur at one point had an idea on this and took it to market. 
so so they they create a lot of uh, prosperity and wealth. Uh, I, I think that they're a very special breed. And you know, as I was a young entrepreneur, my, I started my first business when I was 16. At 36, so 20 years later, uh, I, I found Hootsuite. You know, I, I talked about other entrepreneurs that struggle for 40 years, 60 years to finally become a you know entrepreneurial success. And and you know, my thinking on League of Innovators is is that how can we help accelerate entrepreneurs so that they learn from people that came before them, get to their success at an earlier stage, and they can help that prosperity cycle continue. And um, so, you know, we, we basically provide an online curriculum and chapter model so that people can set up chapters, get access to curriculum, create peer network, and, and, and get into entrepreneurship. So, Ryan, I guess a question I think about a lot is, do you think, do you think people are born entrepreneurs or can anyone become one? Well, I, I wouldn't say anyone can become an entrepreneur, but I think if someone has the passion for it, they can become an entrepreneur. Uh, and you know, there's, there's a difference to that. I think if, if, you know, as a parent, you're trying to force your kid to become an entrepreneur and they just don't love it and they want to just go and do a different type of you know path in life, yeah. it's not going to work in the same way that like forcing somebody to become a doctor or a lawyer when they don't want to be that, I don't think it's going to let them be the best that they can be. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, I think if somebody is passionate about it, I think that they, you know, there are so many success stories about people that found their true calling through a massive long career, uh, you know, in an entrepreneurial sense. But those people really took risks at the end of the day and made it like the story of Colonel Sanders from KFC. An amazing story. If you haven't followed it, you know, there's YouTubes on it. You can follow it. You're like, how did this guy make this happen? He was at the very bottom and just clawed his way up on on passion and belief, um, you know. And and you see these stories time and time again. Uh, I I think I'm excited personally about helping young entrepreneurs get connected and find their calling sooner in life, so that they don't have to go through yeah. 40 years of of struggling. Because I think that they really do help evolve and provide a lot of prosperity to to humanity. So a lot of the people that listen to this podcast are interested in entrepreneurs, they're interested in their careers, they're interested in their paths. What advice would you give and what should everyone know before starting a business if they're on the edge? Well, I think if they're on the edge, they're there, honestly. Like if you are contemplating it and scheming it and thinking about it and dreaming about it, then I think you need to go and do it. I, I, I like wouldn't tell people to pump the brakes. Yeah. You know, one thing, thing that I get a little bit nervous on with people is, is like massively overextending themselves or putting themselves in a precarious financial or, you know, psychological state, you know, like if, if it's that loaded, then I would say, you know, maybe pump the brakes and get yourself in a better spot before you go and you know dive into this because you need to be strong. You need to be healthy physically and mentally. You need to be in a good spot. You need to be able to have a bit of a nest egg financially so that if it doesn't work out, you have some safety nets. Uh, You need to have support around you, friends and family. But if you feel like you've got all of those, then you're and you're and you're scheming about it and thinking about it and passionate about Mm -hmm. it, then, you know, then you got to take the leap because it's the only way you'll know if it's something that that you feel rewarded by. And, you know, life is too short not to go and explore these things that you're passionate about. All right. Well, uh, well, thank you, Ryan, for taking the time to be on the show. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Great talking today. You have to get off the sidelines and you have to go and do it. And um, you can't do it through theory. You can't do it theoretically because it's something that you just have to experience. You need as an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. to have big aspirations. Yeah. Right? Like you need to believe truthfully in your in your heart that this is going to be big or this can be big